Welcome to the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. If you like a lot of wrestling on your YouTube, join our cult. My mum's ringing me. <laughs> Answer it. Perfectly good timing, my mum. Good comedy timing. Oh. No, no, no. You heartless bastard. Get yeah, her on. Harry. <laughs> oh, no, she watches these now. I'm like, don't watch them. Hiya, don't. Mrs. Botchamania. <laughs> Mrs. Hiya, Matthew's mom. No, she <laughs> likes to say she's the mother of Botchamania. <laughs> like, the same way that Saddam said this will be the mother of all wars. She's Is the she mother. a wrestling fan? <laughs> uh, nah, but she just like Jimmy Havoc because yes. he was really nice one time to work. Fair enough. Hello and welcome to the... I almost said Botchamania video. Oh, <laughs> welcome to the Botchamania podcast. I'm all podcast. out of sorts now. Thanks, ma'am. Welcome to the Mother's Podcast, <laughs> starring Ross. Hello, I am a mother. And Jack. I am soon to be a mother. I don't know. <laughs> That's a good segue. <laughs> I'm a mother in the sense of a James Brown mother. That sort yeah. of mother. Bad mother. A bad mother. Hi. Mother That's, that's me. Lived in a cupboard. Is that what the song goes? Curds and way. Under the curds and way. <laughs> Long came a spider, <laughs> sat down beside her, and... Chased me. Way I. Way I. Way we are. I mean, how the hell are you both? Mm, Fantastic. Right. Could not be better. The week's gone quite fast, in my opinion. It was nice. A lot of stuff's happened. That's because we're knackered. That is, actually. It's always a killer after a pay-per-view week. It's always weird seeing you guys, and it's like, hey, how I'm full of life. I'm ready <laughs> for this. And you guys are just like, oh. No, we're not. We're not. When we're I go being... to sleep, all I, th- all I see is elimination chain. <laughs> Corey being... Graves tweets. That's being the... real fam. Oh, God. Oh, God. Get that out of the way. Well, <laughs> someone had to bring it up. Do we have to do it? You know, his do wife. We, do we want anyone? No, no. I've never heard of Corey Graves. Who is he? Yeah, exactly. And his wife never heard of her. Or it, his it, Instagram, never heard of that. It, it was good seeing all the people go, oh, you've made a grave mistake. Oh, it was your video. My, I felt compelled to comment on it after seeing the amount of tweets I got after that. It was more severe, my mentions feed, than when JBL fell over that time. Or that couple of times. That's how, you know... I've got no against Corey Graves, you know. I haven't, but it was it was really bad ones. Like it was like I think it was an island when they were like, oh, it's really bad, isn't it? Like to see a, a marriage like that fall apart, and you know, Carmel and Graves' careers can be impacted. And it was like, what do you think, Matthew? It's like, ah, yeah. oh, oh yeah, it's horrible. Oh dear. It's like, I like it when things go horribly, horribly wrong. So I'm the wrong person to ask. What do you think, Jack? Be the, uh, the moral compass. I think that if the story is as reported, then he's been a bit of a dick, but. I always it always leaves a sour taste when people's personal business is kind of splashed around, regardless of what they've done. As long as it's not criminal, then I feel a bit like mm, it's a bit seedy, this, isn't it? It's like criminal? Everyone, Wait a minute. No. That brings us to our next no, point. How do you think about the Usos? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but everyone, I just don't like everyone kind of delighting in it and taking stands yeah. and saying, ah. There's, there's three bands at the center of this yeah. watching their mom and dad split yeah. apart. You know right. I mean? Not yeah. very nice, is it? No. Yeah. This but is the, where I, the, the big E popcorn he, eating gift. That's me. So that's just like, I, I have no opinions, but I'm laughing my ass off. The latest we know on the situation via pro wrestling sheet is that apparently they separated yet, uh, not years ago, months ago. Mm. And the divorce is close to being finalized or whatever. And I think Corey knew this, because like, he would, because he's part of it. Because every single thing he said on Sunday had a double meaning. I found. He was a bit shameless, wasn't he? Uh, every single thing. Mm. I can't remember any off the top of my head now. But every single thing he said. <laughs> if you do want to see it, you'll watch a video that yes. Colaholic put out. On Monday. I did, there we go. I do, do, did do. realise that he was a bit, like, deliberately critical of Carmella. He was like, oh, she's made a mistake there, tactically, in the match. And I was, like, I was like, oh, this is a bit cringe. This, like, mm. I couldn't hear the, him commentating over the crowd. <laughs> his name. Mm. Just decided, that, you know what? You know what? Someone asked them, who's your favourite commentator right now? Corey <laughs> Graves. Hey, it looks Carmella. Uh, uh, I think it's an interesting story, and I can't wait to see what Bix has to say about this. Um, I feel like everyone's slating Graves on that, fair enough, but if imagine if every story like that came out. There'd be so much. Everyone would just be like, what is this business? What's going on? Oh, yeah. I mean, the I, stuff mean, I, I mean, we see you after shows. Is no, we don't. No, we don't. <laughs> Allegedly. Yes. That's why, we're, that's why we're protected. That's what no one's like <laughs> burst in here with a machete. <laughs> see you soon, Albert Ome. <laughs> I've never seen him do anything. Ome wrestler. I just mean, I've never, I've just what, mean, is his name Poverty? Oh, yeah, hang on. Wait a minute. Thought, we don't see that, Matthew, but Albert Del Rio. No, I've never seen him do anything illegal. I just, his name, he's a man who scares me. That's all I thought of. Mm. Scary man popped in my head, Del Rio. Mm. Mm. But if we asked him to be here, he wouldn't. So. Okay. Right. Dive, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. He's done well. What would you do if a wrestler <laughs> came in? Because who's the most recognizable? I'm like, oh, I'll just set up the videos. And it's like, you're the one who's on the videos all the time. Um, You say the most controversial stuff. Do I? Oh, yeah, I do. 
Yeah, you do, yeah. Mm. The, it's the Usos. <laughs> yeah, but like, are you Matthew? Or be like, no. Nah. Uh-huh. <laughs> What's your real Simpsons episode? Oh, uh, sorry, your Bob's last baby. Oh, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, should we get the mission chamber out of the way or news first? What do you think? Um, I'm easy. What do we normally do? Let's do just do the pub review. Yeah, let's do, let's do that pub Because it's easy to sum up, isn't it? Yeah. It was sort of meh all the way along until the second half of the main event and it was like the best wrestling ever. Yeah. Just basic wrestling, even though it was in a gimmicky change. A change? Cage. Cage. Was, My brain stopped. Good. Um, well, good guy against bad guy. Crowd cheering the good guy, booing the bad guy. He almost did it, but didn't quite get there. It was emotional. It was everything about wrestling. That is good. That was very well put. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and again, uh, Buddy Murphy wrestled a tough match. Again, he's a dick on 205 Live. I'm not sure if anyone watches this show, watches 205 <laughs> Live. I'm pretty sure every time he has a match, where they're like, if you watch this, thought, wow, Buddy Murphy's a good guy, right? Yeah. There. No, he's a belly. He's a, he's a heel on, the, on TV. Yeah. But on the, the, the show's just like, go on, get your stuff in. He puts on good matches. Everyone's like, ah. Oh, he does, right? That was another good match. Uh, I think the only person who's going to beat him now is going to be, you know, Spanish Walter. Who's, Spanish um, Walter? I, I think that's way easier for me to say than actually get his name right. Who's this? The you, guy on 205 Live. Hugo. Carillo. Yes. Oh, right. Does he look like Walder? Is it just me? Ah, if you squint, yeah. Okay. Is it the yeah. haircut? He's oh. got a square head, hasn't he? If you've oh. not got your glasses on, then I. Fair enough. Fair and I died a death. No, uh, no, no. Uh, previews of Owens coming back. Uh, he's eating pineapple pizza, so it's going to be a baddie when yeah, he comes back. Yeah, fair play. How, how dare you? Oh, we're not doing this. Pineapple belongs on pizza. No, it doesn't. Well, there's the divide there, then. <laughs> yeah. I do half and half from pizza. Um... <laughs> The Elimination Chamber match for the women's tag team titles, I thought was very similar to the one they did last year, Women's Elimination Chamber, and the fact that it was whatever until the final moments with the proper um, tag teams. I uh, thought Tamina was outstanding. <laughs> Ross was on the double train. superfly splash, shades of Buzz Lightyear, falling with style. <laughs> <laughs> Two eliminations at once. E, but Nia was funny, wasn't she? Because Bailey's here. Oh, I'm it right Rod's there. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I think Charlotte had aim of that. <laughs> Somewhere around there. <laughs> All right, gone. If, if Bailey had good stayed where she was when now he's like charging, it wouldn't have come nowhere near her. It wasn't the best wrestled match, but I enjoyed the story all the way through. Every team seemed to have a tactic. I yeah, love the iconic. That was their best match. They by were great. Far. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. From from them mocking Nia and Tamina when they walked past, and then Nia just goes bang, and they're like, oh, yep. God, that was so good. The double pin was good. I thought they were good. I'm, I love when the. Uh, Rose and Deville faced off against the Riot Squad, and apparently that was supposed to be a big deal. Like, like, oh man, oh, it's, like the Justi- and- it's like the Justice League oh. of America taking on the Avengers. <laughs> and you're like, are we supposed to care about this? <laughs> <laughs> Finally, oh. nothing. And then when they start the, like the Raw crowd the next night, when Naomi starts battering Mandy Rose and Renee's going, she tried to steal another man, a, ma- a woman's husband. She deserves everything she gets, and I'm just like, <gasps> oh, oh, I'm talking about that. Oh <sighs> God, yeah. I'm surprised they had. Rose and Deville as the last team against Banks yeah. and Bailey because it was like, oh well, they're not freaking winning, are they? Mm. Like Rose has got the feud with Naomi, so mm. all right, whatever. But when yeah, when he picked up the last three teams, I think it was all right. But like, yeah, everyone. It's hard in it because like it's, it's just such a cluster muck to keep it PG, isn't right? It? Mm. Tag team chamber match. So yeah, I enjoyed it. it wasn't I, bad, but you know. I enjoyed the psychology of Sasha Banks. She can't use her arm. Uses the leg instead. Mm. Bank statement modified. Yeah, I like. So those bits were good. Yeah. The promo was a bit weird. Yeah. Well, yeah, they those. should never talk again as long as they've got those belts. <laughs> <laughs> that one on Raw was even worse. <laughs> yeah, it's like Bailey's gimmick is that she's not like a confident talker or anything like that, and she goes out and talks like that. Mm. And it's like that statement I just did with her. no reaction. <laughs> oh, um, come with emotion. Exactly. Uh, no, uh, the Usos came out and shown that there's a double standard in wrestling. There were no negative chance towards the Usos, but there were Carmella. <laughs> men, men, oh, men. Oh, yeah, there weren't any negative chance towards the Usos. And they won the titles. Right. Men, men, men. Now, remember <laughs> remember the other week when I talked about how Alvarez on the post show with his mates, it rips into it. And then when Melter comes along the next day, he's calmed yeah, down yeah, a bit yeah. and he's like, yeah. But he was angry about this finish on both. He was like, the Miz hit his finisher and lost. And he just keeps on like shouting that. Um, he's, he claims right. as well that it happens in the main event he's like Kofi hit his finisher and nearly lost he just rolled him up he reversed it and Meltzer was like I think it was a two count first and he's like no it wasn't I watched it back and Meltzer was right don't trust Alvarez that sounds quite Meltzer was right Meltzer, DTA yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't trust Alvarez 
But um, I I don't know what Ross thinks because of Shane, but I enjoyed. I thought it was fun. Man. Well, it was it was, Ross it was dangerously getting too close to the Royal Rumble where the Miz, the former WWE champion. Is the weaker half of the team, and Shane McMahon, the part-time 49-year-old, is beating up the full-time legitimate best tag team in the world. And then Shane killed himself because he's got to keep himself strong. And then the Miz lost it. I like the way it finished though, because like it was a bit of a shock. I didn't know what to do with myself at the time. I just made a noise. <laughs> um, Did Pachi wail and cry? He was crying. Yeah, what he was, was that emotional. About? I don't. I don't know. I didn't realize he was that close to Miz or Shane. I was like watching your reactions back, and I. And I like heard just a horrid. Yeah. And I was like, I didn't, I didn't know what to do. No, right. Yeah, was he drunk by this point? No, it was second match on the card. <laughs> <really, wasn't it? laughs> Sounds very traumatic <laughs> for Paul Pettit. He was, he was bubbling. Why no? did he? Why did he care so much? I've got no idea. He didn't even have the. He, you both had the same prediction for it. Wasn't we like did, a, yeah, it wasn't both like had the, a, both had the Usos. Uh, no, both had Shane and Miz to retain. It was bizarre. Yeah. Did he just found like DMs from Coy Graves to his last. <laughs> Make me go that. Allegedly. <laughs> oh, allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> uh, yeah, the storyline has now gone all the whack, which is a nice way of saying that. I don't know if they're going to make it better on SmackDown because SmackDown's where they do the good storylines, but right now it doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, it didn't with um, this one, as we'll get to later on, because right. it just completely contradicted what Shane said in the past. I'm oh, very did, excited okay. because Fastlane's in Ohio. Miz is from Ohio. George Sh- is in the front row, isn't he? 70s, 70s porn star George. And <laughs> as a porn star from the 1970s, always a porn star. That's what I was, I was saying the other day. He looks like a porn star from the 70s who still thinks it's 1978 today. Yeah. That's how he dresses. Yeah, I think he's fantastic. Um, but the Miz, I think, is going to be the baby. I think Shane's going to turn on Miz in his hometown. You know? I hope he does. Yeah. Because then that'll make like Crown Jewel make sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but like I said, it's uh, the segments on SmackDown have been great, but like in terms of winning the titles and losing the titles, you're like. Wait, hang on. But... Oh, and they're having another baby. What, Miz and Shane? Yeah. That's what I was yeah. saying on the reaction. I'm, I'm not ruling out Shane being the father as part of this story. That line. would be fantastic. Because <laughs> then when they do the Maury thing and goes, Shane, uh, no, Miz, you are you are not the father. Shane can do the dance. <laughs> <laughs> Play the music over it. Um, <laughs> comical scene with the doctor delivering the baby, but can't get a hold of it because it's so sweaty. <laughs> Oh. Here comes the baby. Oh, alimony, alimony talks. And here comes the money. Uh, someone on Twitter says, I feel like Vince changed the book and to give Jimmy and Jay the titles because he was secretly pleased that at least one guy goes out and drinks versus playing video games. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, whoever wrote that. Take that, nerd. Uh, <laughs> yes. By the way, also the crowd was very no way into it. Because no the belt, if that's the case. Oh, no, you're right. Well, I'm just proving it. Oh, but Brian hardly goes out on the piss. But anyway. Bro- oh, well, yeah. Uh, yeah, the crowd to the show was so loud and so into it. Uh, Finn came out, and by God, you'd think it was in, you know, Dublin, what was it? The Basketball Arena in Tala. Yeah, that's where it was for OTT. That was ah. a very horrible segue. Uh, not much of a match, but I don't think it was supposed to be. Bala beat him, won, crowd were into it, got yeah. the title back. It's like, okay, yeah. Well, I uh, saw an interesting argument. I thought it was decent, and then someone pointed out uh, Bala should never... The babyface shouldn't have an easy route to the belt because he pinned Leo rather than Lashley. And it was as if like it was a backdoor way to get the title. But I remember when The Rock did it by pinning Vince and it was dramatic and really good. That's true. King of the Ring, I think. King of the Ring 2000, yeah. I the six-man tag. Uh, I mean, it's on a different level, obviously, but I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you're right in a way, but if they're not going to do a lashley Bala feud, then it's like, okay, that's just it's uh, one of those ones where it's like, okay, that, that chapter's finished, move yeah. on to the next one. It's like, all right. I just didn't like how they split, well, he seemingly split them up at the end, because, like, did they not watch last year when Bobby was allowed to speak on his own? <laughs> That went well. <laughs> now he's yeah. going to have to do it again. And got a crowd <laughs> cheering him. Like, Go on, beat him up. <laughs> I thought it worked as a tandem. I thought they were really good together. Yeah. Shame. Oh, well, they still are, aren't they? Well, they are. Or... Well, yeah. Well, someone, I think it was Mike Johnson of PW Insider. I said you that, read everything. Uh, that, that, that's, that's what I do. <laughs> um, he said that it's done. It's official. And then he speculated it's down to Leo Rush being an arsehole backstage. Heat. Yeah. So maybe Leo's yeah. an arsehole. I love that Leo Rush is the best negative quality is he gets heat. Yeah. Well, you remember that time when he mocked Emma? Emma, yeah. She and, wasn't ready for Asuka. And that was like, and that was like, yeah, it was a, a dick thing to do. But the way that everyone piled on him made you think 
everyone's waited for a reason to like tear him apart. I love WWE. Wait a minute, didn't interrupt you. I love WWE. Like getting drunk, fighting cops, yeah. tag titles. Corey Graves, whatever, stays employed. Leo Rush says some tweets. <laughs> Get him. You Send the APA him. out to like, do a people, public enemy on him. People I didn't know had even met him. I remember El Liguero on Twitter being like, <laughs> yeah, he was a cock. I him. hate him too, Vince. <laughs> Vince. He missed the trick, though, because he just could have the Richard Keys approach. At the oh. end of it. it was just banter. <laughs> are, that would have just, <laughs> boom. There are dark forces at work. <laughs> Leo Rush doesn't even know the offside rule. <laughs> Oh, uh, Ronda destroyed Rube. I actually like the segment where Charlotte came out, the interview, again, got booed because his crowd was into it and loving it. Uh, Ronda got to destroy Ruby, which makes sense because... I didn't like it, me. It does make sense, but... It does make sense, but I just didn't like... Yeah, because Ruby's good, isn't she? She's not She's not that bad to be beaten right. that easily. I agree, but she hasn't been built up to be a potential winner of this. So I'm glad they've done this because in the last few shows, my biggest criticism of these shows is this... Too many matches, they go on way too long. Either ones that should be quick. This was quick, and there was because there's no way Ruby was winning. Yeah, so yeah. he's like, All right, do it, fine, move on to the next segment, which is Becky Lynch coming in. It all tied in as one segment, and I enjoyed it. I agree, but I never think then that Ruby should have been the number one contender in the first place. It should have been someone like Alicia Fox, that have shum- so she should have somehow got herself a title shot. Okay. Oh no, because she's like Ronda's kryptonite. You remember? I know Ooh, she had an no. argument with her husband in a hotel. Oh no, maybe it wasn't Ronda. <laughs> oh, what with that? Wait, yeah. uh, wasn't there one? Like beat down or something where Alicia Fox just grabbed just Ronda no and just sold slinged. It. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. I, I remember that one. Alicia's Roll. the secret weapon. She's going to beat Ronda for the after Mania. And she, she nearly beat up her husband as well. Apparently so. In a, in a hotel lobby. Well, yeah. She's she got the longest tenure of any woman's wrestler Her in history, I think. Alicia was there. Oh, not Tamina. Tamina, no, Tamina no. was t- 2010 when she uh, debuted. Yeah, uh, Fox has been there since 08. 07, mm. I think, when she was Edge's. Edge's. Whatever. <laughs> she, Affair. She's Edge, like, Edge's grave. She's like the undertaker of the women's locker room. <laughs> she's holding wrestlers' court in a crazy hat and stuff. Just yelling at people. <laughs> <laughs> You've been going out paying for parking tickets. <laughs> she's not Dalek. I don't know what it is. I think she's got <laughs> parking impression. tickets. <laughs> <laughs> you owe Farouk some money. Um. Uh, Braun versus Baron happened. I have no idea why. Holy Christ. I, I predicted Baron to win somehow, and somehow he did. I didn't see, understand how or why. It seems this rivalry is continuing because everybody wants to see it. <laughs> I, 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 I lost for words. I thought it ended at Survivor Series. Uh, not begging your pardon, TLC, but I'm apparently mm. I'm wrong about everything. So let's move on. Uh, oh, the funny thing was, though, Baron put. No. Braun put Baron through the table in the corner, and then Galloway's music hit. But Galloway has to do the slow motion, <laughs> pause, look out, because I'm a bad guy thing that all the bad guys do. So Baron Corbin could have got pinned by Braun, and then Braun could have changed his gear in the street clothes and walked through the crowd by the time. <laughs> but when, when the someone ring. else's music hits, whoever's in the ring has to freeze. It's like a game of musical statues. Yeah. It's just wrestling rules. It happened in TNA right. once where someone was like most of the way up a ladder to win like a King of the Mountain match oh, or something, and the music no. hit, and they were like, <laughs> and it might have been in my head I want to say it was Kevin Nash just sauntering down oh of course yeah <laughs> but I don't know it was knocked off a cashmere by Led Zeppelin yes uh, and then yep Kofi Kingston very very over very successful uh, gauntlet match to replace Mustafa Ali who as we said I, maybe it was a good thing that they changed it uh, or I, I don't even know by the way if Mustafa Ali is actually injured because uh, is, every space, single yeah. show that they've done in the last six months I think there's been a change to the card hmm. so I think that we went wait hang on <sighs> we can't book a show and have it all happened as we said it was going to happen but yeah Kofi Kingston tremendous here crowd ate it all up um, outlast uh, beat Orton ha 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 and <laughs> however there was one thing though if Seth Rollins of Kofi Kingston taught us anything is if that there's a gauntlet match before the elimination chamber, don't last an hour. Don't try hard. <laughs> You'll just tie yeah, yourself don't. out. For, yeah. yeah. But it was it was great. Uh, the bit where for me where it ramped up to another level was well when he kicked out of the knee, the first mm. knee, and he sold it like both of them. He like did the big Rikishi thing, and also on top of the pod when he's just ramming his head into the glass. I was like, oh, it's so good. He jumped up, which just over him. Yeah, yeah. Oh man. It's good you see the bit where Santino appeared as a spirit, all blue, <laughs> and going, "You gonna do it?" <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it's great. Kobe Kingston and a huge push. I uh, hope it carries on, and I hope he's you know gets what all the good superstars to be get, which is uh, a four month feud with Baron Corbin. <laughs> So yeah, oh. a weird, weird show. There were some very good bits, but nothing too offensive apart from Baron. Uh, but yeah, 
Yeah. Any other thoughts on that before we move on? No, because a lot of a lot of what uh, there were a lot of contradictions and stuff on Raw and SmackDown. Oh yeah, don't worry. So There's we'll all, all the, the good faith we'll done by the, the show. We'll get to that. Oh, in the news, apparently Undertaker but is wait. stuck. But stop! Wait. Stop talking! Stop what? the press! What's happening? Everyone stop so you can do this right this time. <laughs> See, I guess what are you talking first. about, Ross? This is the first time we've done this. Carry this on. This is the first take of uh, our lovely little shout out for friend of the channel, Kenny McIntosh. He's on the road again with gold dust. <gasps> Inside the ropes for further details, but I'll give you some now. Birmingham is the start of the tour, <laughs> all the way to London. Several of the dates from March 5th until the 9th. If you want to get involved, Inside the Ropes, check it out online. It goes as far as Belfast as well. It goes to Belfast also. March the 5th until the 9th. I think you didn't say that, did you? Or did I you? did. Oh, yeah, I I'm did going blank. Kenny McIntosh, Gold Dust, together at last, Inside the Ropes. Cheers, Matthew. Should be a very interesting show. I, 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 I reckon he's got yeah. loads of stories, that yeah, man. Yeah, mm. definitely. From Hopefully you can remember them because I remember his book being uh, interesting. If anyone can get the best out of a wrestler, it's Kenny Maxoff. Exactly. He's interviewing them. Like the Jeremy Paxman of interviews, they he's call the him. Wrestler whisperer. Strokes him with his little hand. <laughs> 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 Jeremy Paxman. <laughs> Jeremy Paxman. Beadle. Beadle. <laughs> Jeremy Beadle. <laughs> <laughs> the Jeremy Beadle of interviews. <laughs> <laughs> Put a whoopee cushion <laughs> out of the chair. Oh, <laughs> oh right. Tell me show starts with Kenny just going, boo, hey. <laughs> We're off the... What yeah, shout inside. Kenny's about. <laughs> da, da, da. Speaking of people who are about, Undertaker <laughs> and Starcast. Or is he? Yeah, or is, is he? he? Well. So last week, it was announced the internet broke by the Undertaker's first non-WWE after Kenny. Um... Because that's the end of May, start of April. Uh, end of April, start of May. Nice. Aye, start in London, Ghana, Belfast. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, he was announced last week. Um, everyone lost the bananas. Dave told us what his rate was. He's getting, was it 60K for three hours, I think? So it's a little bit of a discount. Um, but today, there's something on Reddit, which means it could be complete bollocks. Uh, well, what isn't bollocks is Conrad says he's been sued by somebody. People have seen today that Undertaker has been taken off StarCast's website. People are putting two and two together and getting, I don't know, maybe four, maybe six. Who knows at this Let's stage? Let's report it anyway, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so could WWE be soon, Conrad, for using Mark Calloway, FKA, their trademark, The Undertaker, and their official image of The Undertaker? Who knows? But there seems to be a little bit of trouble in the waters. In the newsletter today, <laughs> in the newsletter today Meltzer also said that well, I think it was from earlier in the week, but he said that Vince was very hurt and upset by Undertaker's decision. Yeah. Shocked. Imagine Vince's let, him, let a few things slide down the years because he's the Undertaker. He's his boy. Yeah. He's been there through thick and thin. Yeah. yeah. Especially the thin. Or well, the thick. What's, what's the worst? The thin. One? The, the thin's thin, the worst, yeah. Yeah, what is the bad? Th- what's supposed to be the bad bit? The, the thick thin. and the thin. The thin. The thin. I thought it was in terms of like I thought that generic like it's easier to swim through water than custard isn't the it thick and the thin I thought God, it meant beautiful. <laughs> speak through the thickness of our reaping the rewards you know what I mean like the more ah, yeah. ah. right Google I mean think about that screw wrestler I don't want to think about that yeah Undertaker is is it Starcast yes I don't know how much the the Q&A session is going to be but to make this money back I think a thousand pound per question and you better kneel when you ask it, or until you'll get cross. <laughs> um, I think we discussed Jimmy Uso and Graves enough. Uh, yeah. Matt Riddle on NXT. We're not the same kind of watered-down child's product oh, that yeah. WWE's kind of turned into. What was this interview or quote in relation to... Uh, where was it at? It was an interview. I've not read the full article. Oh, okay. That's just the headline off our website, cultaholic.com. Oh. <laughs> um, and who are we blaming for this? Justin Henry. <laughs> oh. oh, okay. Oh, no, it kind of works. Oh. All right, well, whatever. If he said it, it must be true. Well, isn't he, he, he supposed tra- to say he transcri- that? It's an interview somewhere. I know that much. It's okay. a proper sit-down interview. But isn't this the type of thing that he is supposed to say? Isn't this the thing that NXT fans like? Good. I want NXT to be that. I want it to be the alternative, even though it's funded by WWE. That's that's what I want. Yeah. I, I don't... I'm not sure his, news, his, really. his goal is to get the main roster, is it not? In main event WrestleMania against Brock Lesnar and... Comments like that won't help them out, will mm. they? Will anyone care? I mean, if people are talking about know. it and watching NXT because Depends of it, how much that... money he's making them. Mm. I think he's one of the ones who might get away with it more than if Leo Rush had said it. Oh, could you imagine? Oh. Right, wait a minute. Yeah, Leo Rush. 
t- some tweets. Has then there'd be a things, Richard Keys fine. video out. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine Leo Rush with his voice. It was just banned. I can't do it. <laughs> you got autism. I've got money tism. Oh. It was just banned. Uh, Tommy Robinson did it. It was just banned a video recently. Oh, jeez. By the way, sorry. That's a great segue. Yeah. Um, Let's through, give him a plug. <laughs> through thick and thin. From yes, I didn't mean to plug Tommy Robinson. <laughs> He'll thick- be on tour with Kenny Mac. No, he won't. He <laughs> certainly will not. Through the thick and the thin, there was an old English expression, through, through thicket and thin wood. So it's about what country Is that where it's from? Oh. So thin is the Me best. Maybe both old and English should know that. Th- thin is the best uh, best one, yeah. Oh. Yeah. You heard it here first, only on Cultaholic. What does have your cake and eat now? <laughs> Again. Uh, China inducted in the WWE Hall of Fame as part of D-Generation X. We'll take it. Which we'll take it, yeah. We'll also take means it. Billy Gunn, Mr. Ass. Mr. AEW Trainer. Road Dog, Rick Rude, no, Justin Sensation. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> and also Hornswoggle. <laughs> Tory. Um, Tory. Oh, yeah. Don't forget about Tory. Not Jezebel. The, je- the female ninja. <laughs> Tombstoner. <laughs> Yeah. When Kane um, gets his hands on her and JR's <laughs> <laughs> openly rooting for Kane yeah. to just kill her. <laughs> Tombstone! Uh, yeah, it's, it's like an image that went around on some of the meme Facebook pages where it's the Trojan horse and it's like it says, oh. the DX at the top, so obviously China's hiding the Trojan <coughs> horse. Oh, yeah, put the DX in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she does deserve to go mm. in uh, this thing because she meant a lot to a lot of people, a lot of women. Watched her and went, oh, I can do that. Sweet. I'm, I'm more like her than I am friggin' Sable. So, um, and I think it's, I don't understand why they're trying to downplay her because of what she got up to. But as I said, look at the rest of the roster. Yeah. Here's what I'm saying. As well. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Hulk, Here's Hogan's the Warrior daughter. Award. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't Google him. No. Don't. Um, oh, he loved the less fortunate. Oh, he loved, <laughs> couldn't get enough of them. Right. <laughs> I, I, I think it's a load of bollocks, personally. She couldn't get in on her own. Yeah. But you got to take what you can get, can't you? So there you go. Well, they're not treating her like a woman, not treating her like a man. They're oh, treating her oh, like oh. A, a faction and yeah. putting in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> coming out, yeah. <laughs> Ty Dillinger asked for his WWE release. Uh, I went and checked. His last televised victory was a year ago in the kickoff show for Fastlane. So go cool. figure. Um, wow. And people were going, well, you know, he's, he's young. He's, he's got a lot of uh, no, fans. He's, young, he's 38. Yeah. Yeah. I had no idea. I mean, look, well, well done, Gavin. Pal. He looks nice, but he's, Gavin. you know, he's not. Gavin's not young. Gavin, is that his name? That's his real name. Gavin, Gavin. Gavin Spears. Gavin maybe. Spears. Is he from the Shut Valley? I just picked that out of my arse. Oh, right, yeah. No, his name is because he wrestled on um, ECW on Sci-Fi. That's where I know it from, yeah. The talent, uh, the second, what's it called? Talent, whatever. It was the one that gave us, it was the one after... Uh, Braden Walker. Oh. It's the one with DJ Gabriel and, um, oh, God, Paul Birchall. So. Do you think... Topless class. I think, I think the fans are to blame for Ty Dillinger's just plight me. Well, he's a... How dare they chant something when they're not supposed to be and annoy Vince McMahon? The I modern day Zack Ryder. Him. Yeah, they've right. sabotaged him. You, you think, aye, oh, you thought the thoughtless bastards chanting 10 when you shouldn't do. <laughs> Eesh. <laughs> um, <laughs> I legitimately think that's why he's booked. You can tell that they didn't want to book do, do out with him. Yeah. I mean, he had that one surprisingly good three-way match of Styles and I think oh, Baron Corbin because he's everywhere. Um, uh, Hell in a Cell 2017, I think, and that was it. Yeah. It was like, all right, immediately off TV, shut off. Um, he is good pals with Cody. We should know this. Um, was this as of oh, they, three months ago? They were no. going to do that uh, stable back in the day, weren't they? They were with, uh, with Tyler, Tyler Breeze. Breeze yeah. did the handsome men stable, basically. Just we're all handsome, look at us. We wear suits. Um, it was like Evolution Mark II. They did look very handsome in the picture they took for it, to be fair. Uh, men. It was were very, men in suits. It seemed a bit anchor man, actually. <laughs> but um, apparently he was a bit of a mental figure to Cody Rhodes when he was first breaking in. They were OVW tag champs together, or a tag team together. Oh, okay, yeah. Actually. So he does know him. But Meltzer, interesting, like bit of analysis from him from Dave says that like the mistakes that WCW and TNA have both made before are getting old look older or not as I guess not as exciting cast offs from WWE in mm-hmm. like you know and it just doesn't help and maybe Cody will think outside the box he's I mean he's been getting diff- people outside Kip Sabian Oh, right, aye. Have you heard this? Yeah, but go back to that. It's it's weird to think of Ty Dillinger as being the equivalent to, you know, the nasty boys. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> but I get what you're saying. Yeah, it's like he's, he's a spent force. 
<sighs> but I'll book him because he's me mate. I wonder if that's. But what that he's is what wrestling is yeah. essentially. I mean. But then he, but Cody is going. <laughs> oh, out can you way. book us? Message seen. <laughs> but Cody is going out of the way to like get a variety of people, not just people that he's familiar with, or even the most well-known people in the business. I- I'm alright with him coming in and getting squashed by Pac. He might. I mean, yeah, you know. Jericho did. Hey say, guys, turn. I think Jericho did say they're interested. In the cu- just was it just a couple of WWE's guys? Why wouldn't one of those be Ty Dillinger? <sighs> don't answer that question. Why? <laughs> Wait a minute, why? No, don't. Slap, slap, this. slap. No, Here's no, why. no. Oh. There you go, and you get. Done it. Um, that was a joke last week, by the way. No one, no one, surprisingly, no one gave me negative feedback, which is all right. Heat between Matthew Oh, no, Simon. Justin Henry, stop writing that article. No. <laughs> uh, Chris Hemworth set the play Hulk Hogan in Netflix. It says Hemsworth. Oh, it does say Hemsworth. Uh, Thor set Bruno the play. Sam, Bruno Satano. <laughs> the, the lad who was trying to play a school kid in Home and Away when he was at least 23 <laughs> to play Hulk Hogan in Netflix biopic. Is that him? I I, I used to watch him when we me mum me mum watch Neighbours Home and Away and then Emmerdale obviously I thought it's a you triple said, threat I thought and then, you um, said Home Alone I thought you meant he was the Jesus older Christ. you know in Home Alone three when he's got the older brother and sister and the sister Scott I have Hans, not seen Scott Hans, Hans, Scott yeah. Hansen's the little girl um, you've not seen Home Alone three this no. is my town watch your step if you come well, it's, Mrs oh. Hess the old Jezebel but babyface turned over you guys watched Home Alone three Home Alone three is Fantastic. Yeah, I think it's great. There's a remote okay. control car involved you heavily. You smacked my winky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to watch it again now. I'm going to have to wait oh, until <laughs> <laughs> There is a pool. There's a pool. There's a pool. Oh, oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh. Hi. Oh. Well, that film's got everything, man. So, Hulk Hogan, Netflix biopic. Uh, what was what was saying. What a better way to celebrate Black History Month. Oh, <laughs> no. And I thought... <laughs> this could be good if they do it. That's what it is. The reverse to House of Cards, where Hogan is just saying... Dictating his life, and he goes, and "This is when this happened, brother. This, this is, is what this I'm saying. He's, he's, yeah, official, right, right. he's a consultant. That's his official role in this entire thing. So he's going, yeah, that happened like that, exactly yeah. like that. Yeah. And then they have people going, it did not happen that way. <laughs> no, it didn't. I can imagine Andre turns to him in the middle of a grapple. He's like, I don't weigh that much. <laughs> yeah, nine hundred pounds, brother. Is that right over my head, brother? And I was like, it was about to be. Wait, 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 we were was saying that one of your tweets, the way the weight thing. Yeah, but, but uh, people, sorry. no, no, sorry, but people have been talking about, about Hogan for like, uh, sorry, Andre, sorry for years. Like, oh, well, I, we're standing there and he, and he died like not long afterwards. He's like, like you had rematches to him for three years <laughs> afterwards. What are you on about? I heard the story for the first time today about Hogan claiming he wrestled 400 days in a year. Because of the time. Because of the time of, difference that he accrued. Arn Anderson said that Japan. as well, sadly. I don't know. Like, have you heard this? Why don't you factor in time difference? Why not? But he's coming back. He's on board. What do you mean? <laughs> and he's somebody who's breaking the business. Uh, he had a match in Japan. And I think it was either Tenru or Chosu. There's two of those old, miserable Japanese guys. He was probably a very young and spry, 53 at the time, that he wrestled. And then I quote, shot on him for what, a few minutes, brother, before going back to the match. And it was like, one of them's a master of judo, Hogan. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> we you give him a, a flying clothesline. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, there's that. Um, we, we were saying before the oh, most God, intriguing thing those. apart for this film is the hairstyle that Chris will have. Because will they give him the full? Will he have oh, the the mullet yeah. or the do or the do rag? Tell the get around. You have it. to get it off at some point. Did he wear a do rag in the eighties when he was just in downtime? I don't think he did. Did he? No. Just a more, like a sort of nineties thing, wasn't it? Yeah. He didn't wear. A I don't want to see. I want to see. I, I want to see Hemsworth looking like that because he's picked. He was saying this before. He's picked a very handsome man to play himself. If he has yeah. indeed picked the guy, but well, Paul, yeah. if I was booking my life, I'd want freaking <laughs> Thor playing it. <laughs> Start the podcast. Thor, You'll be played Thor, by freaking little and large Thor. or whatever. Be like, oh Thor, hello, Thor editing videos. <laughs> Stop it. I've just thought of a good <laughs> Simpsons reference. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I want to see Botchamania. Start production on Botchamania the movie. <laughs> Where are my ice cream bar? Everyone knows it's like Oakley people three foot four where there's just me. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> what are wrong me, Tom? <coughs> oh, God. Uh, I'd play like Simon Miller to give balance. I can't wait for a WXW next month. <laughs> Hello, Walter. No, I'm too busy to talk to you right now. <laughs> <laughs> it says, uh, oh my god, Charlotte and Andrade, oh my god. Yeah, what? yeah oh, they're, um, the big news. either going out. It's exciting. What? Really? No, no, no. He's buzzing. No. I don't know about that. Yeah, it was uh, someone yesterday seen them in the airport cuddling, <gasps> tweeted about it or whatever, and then Sean Ross oh. sat, the man, on, the man of the hour. More than, we'll more throw so, him on the bus. More so than Leo Rush. Intelligence um, pie. <laughs> 
tweeted <laughs> saying, uh, yeah, they've been together for at least a month because he saw them frolicking around Phoenix for the Royal Rumble. Frolicking? Frolicking and skipping. Occasionally hitting each other with a reverse run. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Catch each other on dives. Oh, oh, talk about the tweets as well. Aye, there was tweets last night. Charlotte replied to somebody going, oh, look at this new power couple in WWE going, slow news day, winky face. <gasps> the winky face being the crucial part of that. Mm. You know what I mean? Nudge, and nudge. I, and Andrade tweeted a picture, uh, a gif of him doing the Viva La Raza titty shake, I think I'll call it. Uh, but the location of the tweet was in Charlotte, North Carolina. Filth, dirty, mucky. So people are putting two. He was in. tweeting from in Charlotte. Yeah. Disgusting. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> well, it was what he is. <laughs> what a favourite video Have of all you time. Seen the video of the girl, like some English, just like middle class lass on a piano doing like an indie sort of cover version of a song or whatever, just singing nicely. And her boyfriend comes in the room and goes, "Which one he just doesn't know?" <laughs> he just ruins it for her. <laughs> I love the one where the, girl, the guy, that's oh, so the girl jumps out the guy and he's like, boo! And he goes, I'm holding a cup of tea, you dick! <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> oh, yes. <laughs> We're starting a bunch of dads now. We've got quick, quick little videos we share amongst ourselves. Uh, God, any other news? Um, <sighs> there was now in the Observer today that was new. Uh, the Raw script thing was another thing this week. Apparently, yeah. they had to rewrite Raw. We'll talk about that during Raw, surely, because yeah. uh, I'm all newsed out. Everybody get excited for the Cultaholic Hall of Fame. And now it's time for the Hall of Fame. Yes. Oh, I don't know why I said that like a YouTuber. I'm sorry. Yeah. What is up, everyone? Hey, guys. How's it going, guys? <laughs> We're now here for the Hall of Fame. <laughs> That's more, boom, boom, that boom. Number more. 15. <laughs> Uh, that was on. more like um, snooker commentary or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, snooker? No, not snooker. Um, what, what's John Parrott sat there. Wait, what? Get down to the corner. Wait, which He's going to take the shot. And, hey, guys! Wait, which sport? He's am, hit the red! <laughs> which sport am I thinking of? I don't know. And now we're, we're Quidditch. here. With, oh, no, I'm doing like Attenborough thing. And yeah. now we see... Yeah, it was yeah. my ass. Yeah. Yeah. Penguin Actually, football. Oh, that's what you Why doesn't Attenborough have a YouTube channel? Oh, yeah. A vlog channel, I mean. <laughs> Imagine that. I love David Attenborough, me. He's good. I'm drinking a cup of tea. <laughs> it's weird, though, when mainstream, like Raheem Sterling or Jack Whitehall, get out of, you, they've got YouTube channels now, and it's like, that's cheap. Yeah. Get off. Get out, get out of our, get our, our turf. Get back to the mainstream. Because they do nothing and get, like, <laughs> three million hits. Raheem right. Sterling scored the winner last night against Schalke. Oh, I meant on YouTube. Oh, man. right, okay. <laughs> I'm going to go with him. I'm not the son. At the time of recording. Um, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, Good you. one. Thank you. Um, and results from last week's Hall of Fame. Don't we, haven't, we haven't got about this. Uh, in third place, Dean Ambrose. Further proof that everyone watches the show is a racist. Um, Charlotte Flair, I forget why she was voted. I think she was just being very good. Uh, also 17% a draw there. So the winner, by default, J&J Security with an astonishing 66%. No, that is a well done, Jack, massive well. result for J&J, that. It that is. is massive. Because it's like people going, oh, yeah, them. Wow. Well, I'm going to have to rethink my pick this week. It's like... For another obscure semi from like four or five years ago. Semi? Yeah, that's right. Uh, cool. Uh, would you want to go first? All right. Um, this week, I've, had, I've given this some thought, and I think it's time to open the Cultaholic Podcast Hall of Fame celebrity wing for, for well-known people who listen to the show. <laughs> um, there's a lad on Twitter called Lewis Capaldi, who is a singer from Scotland, right? He's got like 100,000 followers or something, verified all that. He's on tour at the minute with supporting Bastille. Yeah. Oh, wow, all right. um, Bastille are the worst thing that's ever happened yes, in music. Yes, but I give his songs a listen. <laughs> but I give his... But I give his... But I give his... I hope he doesn't listen to him on the tour bus with speakerphone on. Um, but his songs are... He's got a cracking voice, and he's got great banner as well. He's one of those cheeky Scottish lads who... He, I saw him do his, like an Instagram story or whatever where he's like talking about how he really needed... He, he farted before he went on stage the other night and thought that he crapped himself and he was singing his songs thinking, oh, sh oh no... But he hadn't, so it was all right. We've all been anyway, there. Someone did a tweet saying, when's the Art Jack the Jobber and Art Lewis Capaldi uh, collab going to happen? And I, and he followed me from it, and I thought, oh, no, he thinks I'm someone that I'm not. He thinks I'm a musician or whatever. So I replied, like, just want to clarify, I'm not a singer or whatever. Don't worry about it. And then he replied, that's not what I expect the front man of American Rachel to say. He gets the in-jokes. He gets all the deep. He's wow. a fan of the channel. So my nomination is Lewis Capaldi. 
Lovely. Yes. And he was at the Brit Awards, so nice. Was he? Oh, I hope he's not on tour anymore. I mean, it, 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 <laughs> Fair enough. What, you mean you didn't watch the Brit Awards? I watched some of it last night. I watched Pink. She didn't do any of her old songs. <sighs> What's the point, then? Uh, she's got she's got newer ones, hasn't she? It's I mean, not as good, though. No, she didn't do, like, a pill. She didn't do... Uh, Don't Let Me know? Get Me. Great Outstanding. Fantastic Top song. draw. Didn't do any of that. Not even Stupid Girl? No. Oh. She did like just so give me a reason, just uh, oh, okay. That's and right, the yeah. bloke from Bastille came out and sang it with her. And he went, Jack. I heard what you said about us. <laughs> it was Ross. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'll just like to clarify those are the thoughts and opinions of Ross Twiddell of Cultaholic.com. The Bastille are the worst thing that's ever happened to music. I think Imagine Dragons are worse. Matthew, you got a one? Got a bad band? Worst thing that happened to music? The Auto Tune. Ah. Oh. No, okay. specific band. There's no band I really hate. Really hate. Okay. I don't like Alpha Give me a minute, me. I'll think of one. Keen. Keen, they're up there as well for me. This could be the end of... I've been told a little bit of the singer from Keen, and I don't like that. Don't like well, that. Well, while Ross is telling us this Hall of Fame, I'm going to Google what he looks like. Okay. Sir David Attenborough. Whoa. Let's have a celebrity Does he week. watch the videos? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. The, I mean, by the celebrity one, I meant celebrity fans of the channel. You can't... David just... Attenborough is no, a well-known no, fan of oh, the fast... Ca- oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The fast... Ca- <laughs> bam, 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 bam. <laughs> it's 2016. Let's go. <laughs> e, what's up, everyone? It's Jack from... I can't... I was shy then. What more do you need to say about David Attenborough? He's not a fan of... You can't go in the celebrity wing. You can go in the normal wing. Is Snoop Dogg really a fan of wrestling? He got with is Snoop Drew Carey really a fan <laughs> of wrestling? He was a wrestler. He was in the rumble. This sack of money says he is. <laughs> Snoop Dogg necked on with Maria. Did he? Yeah, he saved her from Santino Morella at WrestleMania. Oh, and then he got with her. God, I. That's right. Snoop D. Wrestling! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Say good, David. So I don't, is I don't it think, David Attenborough? Don't think I need to clarify. What's your favourite David Attenborough? My favourite David Attenborough? Uh, Blue Planet. Oh. I like the Blue Planet. It's very, very tranquil. Nice to sit back and relax to. Listen to him. I, I, someone's going to do it. Thank you, Jack. <laughs> yeah, nice. No, oh, sublime. Uh, institution. Well, the argument's there. Well, then next week I'll nominate the Beatles. Well, then. Like, what, ti- how is this allowed? There is a tie into wrestling. Ah, you wait, wait, wait. Currently giving Daniel Bryan all the material he's using on <laughs> WWE TV. David Attenborough is doing those speeches worldwide at the minute about conservation and needless consumption and stuff okay. like that. Does he talk like that? Killing the he's... planet. Yeah. Few that... <laughs> people are horrible bastards. <laughs> <laughs> you eat your burgers and concession stand drinks. <laughs> He put him on your he put them up on your head, he shouts, Huff, up, up. <laughs> I am intellectually superior to all of you, me and Eric. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, David Amber. Now well, the mic, the yeah, well yeah, yeah, get that twisted now. back around. No, I did I was thinking like hey, there you go, it's not good. Oh, quality production here. Thrilling audio, <laughs> audio listeners only. Yes, Matthew was going in and out. <laughs> Is it still? There it's very go. slowly moving, like the Earth's axis, as David Ambrose <laughs> would say. My vote. Well, I had a lovely time in Dublin. Yeah. A shocking revelation came back with you. That apparently we're liked over there. Oh, oh right, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, That's you a... have been cheating on. Uh... Yeah, yeah. Uh, I had such an amazing time. I was there. And again, lots of people. Uh, saw me and were like, oh my god, they love cult. I'm not going to do the accent because I can't do it. Oh um, my god. Oh, no. oh my it. god. I, lo- oh, I, I love the cultaholic boys. I love the wee accent you do for, <laughs> for the Irish. It's man. always so spot on. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a real Irish person somehow got into your body. <laughs> I, I, you're a gas. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was just so lovely. Um, OTT, first show being there, it was at the arena. Which the basketball arena it was weird because there wasn't any drink there because they oh. have a license. So everyone was like, "Oh, Matthew, come to a weird show because there's no, everyone's you know pre-drank, sure." And also, funny enough, uh, the security there they have proper security for wrestling because they put it the same category as boxing and MMA, where there's always fights between the families who have come to watch it. Yeah. So there's actually proper like move. <laughs> No. no, I want to see that. Get, if you're not buying merch, sort off. Wow. <laughs> but, uh, but the show was amazing. They did the three main events first in, in concession because they all had to be out of the of Ireland and at the performance center soon as. It was awesome. Pack, 
snapped his finger in oh, half, uh, put it back in, uh, carried on. Oh, man. What a hard bastard. Oh. Our, our favourite bastard. Uh, the crowd were lovely. What I'm nominate is not going to be that or the lovely fans or the Black Penny or Jameson's Whiskey or anything like that. It's going to be the WWE Network app. <laughs> so the show's on Sunday. Elimination Chamber's on Sunday. I had a lovely time until the wee hours of the morning eating my Wow Burger and having a nice time. So I figured... Wow! On- wow. Burger. Oh. Look at all that beef. Look, oh, oh, God. Couldn't. And so I figured, okay, great. I haven't seen the pay-per-view live. I can use the award-winning WWE Network app to watch this. Click it. Use the hotel Wi-Fi. Loads up. There's two tabs. The default tab is the news one. Comes up with, guess who won? Oh. <laughs> you bunch of bastards. Oh. Three non-Walter related hours. You saved me, sure. <laughs> but I do have this podcast to D. Uh, I have no idea why that happens. I have no idea why they do that. And also, if you're watching something on Netflix, I'm watching this great show on Netflix. Oh, I've got a message on Twitter. I'll pause this, scan out the app, reply, scan back the thing. It's exactly where you were. You can pause it. It just minimizes, comes back up. Network. Oh, I've got a message. Minimize. It craps itself. <laughs> Crashes, but it doesn't really crash. Spawn the message. Go back on. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Would you like to start from the beginning or what's well, playing now? And it's obviously not now because it's really 12 the next day. So it's like, all right, cool. I have to find out where I was. You're awful, W Network app. You're awful. You haven't changed since it came out. You're crap. I want everyone to know you're crap. So, I appreciate being able to watch it, but it's three and a half hours long. And that's just the kickoff show nowadays. You should be better than this. Don't tell me the answers. The thing I'm about to watch, Sodgers, you get. So the we network is for the whole just thing. so I could rant about it. Right. <laughs> to be fair to it, it did upload every single episode of Confidential this week. Yeah, but I'll tell you the friggin' revelation at the start. <laughs> Which superstar is gay? And it's like Pat Patterson. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have, oh, so was it Lewis shared it on Twitter yesterday? The uh, Lewis, the, the dragon, dragon Beersley, uh, the son of Peter Beersley, prof- professional wrestler, northeastern legendary that. wrestler. Is he really, by the way? Peter you Beasley's know son. him. You Lewis, Lewis House is real Lewis name. House. Oh, I know him. Yeah. Oh, he's not. He he's shared a Lewis guys. He shared a screen grab Lucha of Mean Lewis. Gene just uh, singing to mix a lot. Oh, yeah. Which is what that show is all about, and why I love it so, oh. so much. Oh, and that Tri Moon video, about wrestling about is fake. About that juicy, juicy doubles. I'm not that malarkey. Mean Gene's in trouble. Yeah. Yes. So, you know I mean? please talk the lead the singer of. Please, God, I'm, damn I'm, it. I'm, I'm not my fault. You're like John Laurinaitis. Do I have to hold it like, like no, the lead singer like, of Keen? You give yourself some slack. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> there you go. There we go. I'll, I'll hold it like. Yes. Oh, but you cannot hold it. Uh, it's unholdable. Oh no. Oh, okay, there we go. Right. So the lead singer of what? It's just it's going to get uncomfortable for you, isn't it? Lead singer of Keen nominates. <laughs> Lewis Capaldi. Not the lead singer of Keen, the lead singer of Bastille. Oh, how dare you, Sir David Attenborough. And Marky Smith nominates uh, the Wii Network. Okay. Please, you can vote. if you'd like to vote. Yeah, there you go. You, you do it. After you. Patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. He's near there. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the Raw and Smackdown recap. And now let's look at the week of wrestling. Uh, sorry by the way for listening to the audio version. My mic's been a bit weird. No, no, it's, uh, I, think it's, I, think we've, I think it's all right. Okay, cool. Don't worry. Let's start off with Raw. Triple H announced the arrival of Tommaso Ciampa, Johnny Gargano, Ricochet, and Alistair Black. And what a great, great way to debut these guys with no hype. And then Triple H come out and go, I represent the Raw. Yay. Smackdown. Yay. And NXT. Wait to the pop. Wait to the pop. Mm. No pop is coming. Brands here. <laughs> so, and you can tell like, oh, no. Nah. I, was, I was expecting the, the earth shattering kaboom and nothing came. So it's like, here's the guy. He's just like, yeah. He's like, oh, <laughs> this is going to go great then. Uh, you'd think they'd think about that sort of thing before deciding to do things like that in that place. That was a really long-winded way to say that. Why would, you, why would you choose Lafayette, Louisiana, Lafayette. if you know that Lafayette, Louisiana is a very quiet place to debut new people? Because it just gives off the impression that, eh, I don't she, necessarily think it's their fault. If they're going to debut some guys with no hype or build whatsoever, and again, it's I think it's very uh, silly to expect all of the Raw crowd and SmackDown crowd for that matter to also be NXT fans. They're not. No. It's a simple fact. That's why people go, why can't Raw be like NXT? I'm like, no, NXT works for you and the thing it's going for. It would it would die in its ass if it was three hours long every week. Uh, so for them to go, 
you guys ready for Raw? Yay! Cool, here's some NXT guys. Is you know, it's as much fault the WWE is this this crowd which didn't care. Yeah, you'd think they'd have waited until they were in New York or Chicago or Florida. Anywhere they've done a take hour. Yeah. Take over yeah. Lafayette. So it might be a bad example, but could you imagine if AJ Styles debuted in Lafayette instead of Orlando where nobody potentially uh, knew him? That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. True. Was the, that Rumble in Orlando? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, what a choice that was then. Yeah. Oh, the mm. impact. Oh, he, he made a point of that. I had, I had an interview with him saying he was worried that nobody would know who he was, but because of obviously Impact, TNA, whatever it's called, being in Orlando, people did know. So he was fine. Mm. Yeah. Speaking of things that were not fine, Braun Strowman defeated Baron Corbin in a tables match to definitely win this match, and then no one came out and interfered. And so I why, thought, yeah, of all why? the times for someone to come out and beat him up, this was it. No, uh, I don't care. Less than 24 hours after he just successfully had an interference done on his behalf to win a match, he didn't do it this time. They just couldn't be asked this that time. That was weird. Yeah. Um, the crowd loved it. That was the, the most popular match for them, though, this one. Yeah. They cheered more for this than for... My match of the year 2016 rematch later on in the show. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, IC champion Finn Balor, who did what is necessary on every episode of Raw to reference all the previous Intercontinental <laughs> champions that have ever been. Razor Ramon. Oh, I've done the accent. You've lost it. Razor Ramon. No. Razor Ramon. No. no. Shawn Michaels. No. <laughs> Rick I would Flair. never do that. It's a pack of racists <laughs> bringing me down. Um, um, yeah, anyway, he did though. Bala, oh, um, it was it was this also was an awkward moment because he does the WWE babyface promo. He's like, "It's been a while since I've had one of these championships," and everyone goes, "Like, there's yeah, you crap, no part <laughs> for it." Like, oh, why did you mention Ric Flair though? <laughs> in the former Intercontinental Champion, the pantheons of great Intercontinental Champions, Ric Flair was like seventy-two. <laughs> when he won his, wasn't he? Exactly. How good he was! <laughs> That's how he beat Carlito and. Uh, oh. I forget the show. Unforgiven, I think. Unforgiven 2005. Yeah, and he spent the rest of the show having sex in the back of his limo. Yeah. <laughs> With a title on him. Did he mention and he, he faints at the end, didn't he? When he gets out with the champagne. Just go, woo! Did he mention Pedro Morales? <laughs> no. Ah. Don't think so. That's strange. You'd think he would. Like, like most modern wrestling, no one mentioned him. <laughs> I saw that tweet from X-Pac today saying that only uh, Bob Bartland went from oh, wrestling. Christ, years, like one wrestler went. Yeah. Fair play to Bob. Big Bob. Big Bob was still asking him. Go on, name all the presidents then. <laughs> um, this one's crap, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I was confused because then Champa and Gargano, who are the NXT and North American champion at this point, wrestling the revival. But I'm like, this is just a thing that, like, let the wrestlers have a rest after Elimination Chamber, something a bit weird. Then they appear on SmackDown and went, well, okay, maybe that makes sense. But I mean, Raw's longer, they'll have to be on SmackDown, right? I'm like, there's no now, way they're leaving NXT. Now right? they've had their profiles moved on WWE.com to the main roster section. Ooh. Right. So, yeah, then I watch NXT and, spoilers, Gargano lost the Alpha America title to Velveteen Dream. And I'm like, I know, right, sorry. Don't but don't see, it to be you guys, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I'm like, oh, this was a move? This is a permanent thing? They spent, what, a month hiding up all those EC3, Lacey Evans stuff promos? And now we've got these guys? With, I'm like... This, right. We need more stars. Damn it. I was going to say, this absolutely reeks of a Vince snap decision. Just like, change it. And then they've got to go, right. all right. So, yeah, apparently, what was, what's the story? Everyone was absolutely cream crackered after Elimination Chamber. Big right. pay per view day. They get the roll. Vince was there late. Vince turns up Vince late. Vince turns up late and goes, We're changing everything. <laughs> <laughs> he always did that during more. He always showed up in his limo, Mitch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, so uh, he goes to Triple H. Uh, there's not enough great. Re- this is all through Meltzer, I think. There's not enough great wrestlers on Raw. Mm-hmm. We need to build some new stars. So apparently, these four men are Triple H's best from NXT. But he didn't ask Triple H. He just did it. Did he not ask? Apparently, he just did it. Yeah. Oh wow. And then Triple H had to kind of compromise on the actual booking of the show with him. I saw that with the Ricochet because yeah. originally it was supposed to be allegedly Finn Balor versus Ricochet, and Triple H was like, no, no. Don't give that yeah. away. Like, Don't give that away so soon and have like babyface versus babyface. Now could Ricochet win when Balor just won the title? Yeah. The yeah. day before stuff good call Triple H. Yeah, yeah. What else was there? There was one more bit. I've forgotten. Seth Rollins was supposed to be cleared, but he wasn't. And apparently the whole show was supposed to uh, revolve around him. I think he only had the one promo, didn't he, backstage towards the end? So Him and Dean. An Alexa Bliss versus Ronda Rousey squash match was cancelled. Because WWE didn't have the faith in Alexa to have a longer match, which they, needed to take the place of Rollins, yeah. with Ronda Rousey. Oh. So they picked Ruby Wright instead because they think she's a better wrestler. 
Yeah. She's a more experienced worker. She just lost in a minute and a yeah. half or whatever it was. This was like an apology letter, which I, I, but, can, I can accept. <laughs> Like I said, I don't mind like Ruby Riot losing the Ronda. It's like, all right, let's forget about that. And then when, when she's getting hyped up in a few months' time to wrestle her or the champion, that's fair enough. But then have a wrestle again the next. The, uh, yeah, it's this like, give an aspirin a headache. It's I feel so bad for Triple H. He spent yeah, I feel bad. He for spent him. years crafting this storyline with Gargano and Chamber, and then it's like he's drawn a really lovely, real true to life picture, and Vince has got a crayon and he's going ah. <laughs> It's it so sort good. of worked on Raw though, because after the, after they won that tag match, they were sort of standoffish, and like Gargano was like, "You go and go up the ropes," and Champ was like, "Yeah." yeah, and, yeah. and then on SmackDown, they were just fully babyface, and they were just like, "A year and a half's gone." <laughs> <laughs> Hit a close like, Yeah, come on. <laughs> Again, I'm often critical of like people stepping up and like not enjoying the product as fans and being too critical because they've got a podcast, a blog, or a video series about mistakes <laughs> or things like that. But it shows like this that make you become a critic and go. But why? Like, why have you done it? Like, this is... Then it's like uh, we're in the minority, aren't we? Because it's clear that not a lot of people watch NXT in the grand scheme of things, isn't it? Yeah. Which is sad. And also well, unfathomable to me. Can't yeah. work it out. But it's because it's aimed at guys like you and me yeah. and him. Uh, Pointing at the completely different people that want to say that. Yeah, did. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you and me. <laughs> but yeah, it's aimed at that audience. And that audience... Funds it and keeps it running. It's not something that can be a three-hour thing. Like I said beforehand, it cannot be. And you mm. cannot expect people. To, you guys watch NXT? He goes no. That's why you do promo packages and stuff to hype them. I mean, it's. But could, uh, they, could they not have just waited a few months and done this after Mania? How many guys they be before Mania? Is like it, that's insane. Yeah. Like before the Rumble, yeah, sure with all the, the new batch. On, but then to have it even more people, I like, jumped uh, on midway through the road to WrestleMania. I just don't like it when they throw oh. throw many people in there at once. Yeah. I like the staggers right. one a night, make them feel a bit more special. Ah! <laughs> yeah, wow, four new people at once. Oof, okay. Give me the moody one. <laughs> Michael Cole likes that word, doesn't he? Moody. This is Alistair Black. He is moody. <laughs> Here we see Alistair Black. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what else happened? So, yeah, we had the rematch of, yep, DIY versus Revival. Yeah. It oh, was fine. probably the best thing on the show, but even then it was like, Cool. So the rival are losing again. Yeah. <laughs> the I can't believe it. I thought. I thought if any match was guaranteed, right. guaranteed to have like a dodgy finish, like a run in or something, like a right. contest, it'd be this one. But no. And also, Balor and Ricochet via Lashley and Leo Rush in a match that was should have been good, but because it's Raw, it's like okay, cool. You're gonna wrestle for twenty minutes and like it. You're like, oh great. Ricochet just that extent time. Out, like all his flips and that, and the crowd didn't care. <laughs> But why would they? If you're a guy, if you're a guy who watches Raw and you're like, oh, no. you used to watching Apollo Crews from time to time. <sighs> but he's probably but he, just he's, and imagine that being the second coming of Apollo Crews. <laughs> but he's better than Apollo Crews. Yeah, I know that. Shit. I'm just like from this perspective of people who don't watch NXT. <sighs> hmm. I've just seen this smiley man doing flips and thought, oh, I've seen that before. Yeah. <laughs> Which isn't, yeah, obviously further from the truth, but. No. As the Black defeated Elias, Elias is back to his bad ways. And getting pops the night. Good. Yeah. Good. Thank God. Okay. One good thing in the show. And then, yeah, Ronda Rousey beat Ruby Riot in a ah, ah, ah match, I guess. Uh, Lacey Evans appeared. <laughs> What's your uh, take from these appearances? Like, what are they doing with her? Reminding what? you that she exists. Uh, Raw also, again, related to this, God, Raw was weirdly put this week. Like, they had Lou Chow's party make the entrances, then show a video about, like, Becky Lynch. It was so, Lee. and then it looked like Paul Heyman did a promo, and then they cut the Brock Lesnar thing, and then he was gone. He like he, he didn't get to his point. He could do. A, he's like, I'm going to throw it to this video package, which will do the talking for me, and then he's the narrator of the video package. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> hello, I'm 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 Paul Heyman. <laughs> it's all right, <laughs> I'm Paul. But no, the Lacey Evans thing. People, everyone's been comparing it to Sunny and the Godwins. Yeah. Yeah. I like. I love Otis. Little touch, little nuances. Oh, you meant that? The right. little things in wrestling, yeah. as someone said once upon a time. <laughs> when it Lacey's done, done is hitting, Otis bops along with it. Fantastic. You see the Instagram video we did last night with Ricochet no. on the plane? What he happened? starts singing Ricochet's theme to him, but in the, in the way Otis can't. But you have to see it to believe it. What is he? One and only. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Essentially. And Ricochet sat there going, oh, what do you, what do you like, man? Leave us really, alone. Is it like when, <laughs> who used to, is it DIY used to mock Bobby Roode? And be like, glory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that <laughs> yeah. was the best. The glorious was, bombs. The glorious bombs were amazing. Actually, that was good. Yeah, they got a mini highlight. Gable and Roode going, in how are gym? you guys getting the tag title shots? <laughs> when, where the guy, and you were like, because we're 
we're good online. <laughs> Have you seen how many t- retweets our gifts get? <laughs> White nerdy guys love us. Uh, SmackDown. Shaman and Miz secured a SmackDown tag team title rematch for the fast lane because one of them is the son of the owner of the company. Little, and also because... Bollocks, Matthew. And also Miz's speech was up there with Independence Day. President <laughs> <laughs> one. My father has never been proud of me until I wrestled with you. Because he's a fan of the Attitude Era and doesn't watch NXT. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any thoughts, Ross? Well, you're very shame opinionated. up, man. We've got to earn our things and this, that, and the other he's saying. And then he just goes... He said some not very nice things. I feel like my hatred towards Shane is probably going a bit too far now. No. no. Give it a week. <laughs> no, I think you're justified. Yeah, you it say did. why you hate him. Yeah. I like his jumping back elbow. I like that. I like that he hits it and then lands worse than his opponent <laughs> does. Like most of his moves. <laughs> yeah. I like his... Um... <laughs> Oh, no, I don't like his float over DDT. I like the rocks. However confused I am. <laughs> yeah, it's easy. The rocks, Jamie, man. Because he's very good. Yeah. yeah. Um, but also, Jay Uso in that segment. Bit of a no-no to me. Sometimes he's got to forgive Jimmy. Sometimes. <laughs> Go back a year. It was the other way around. The yeah, shoe was on the other foot. Yeah. You, you bastard. <laughs> I'd have had a word with him if I was Jimmy backstage. So I don't think Jimmy mentioned it on TV. Did he mention it? What are you talking about? Like, it was a strong hint. Really? What was During it? the promo when he goes, oh, sometimes I've got to forgive, uh, got to forgive Jimmy. Blah, 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 blah. Well, he was, yeah. Oh, he was, didn't even. That's God. a bit hypocritical, Jay. Yeah. That's where my mind went to yeah. first. But I'm a hack. Jimmy's always been my favourite. <laughs> Jimmy's always been my favourite one of the two. Left do so. Do Fat so. ahead. Square, square, tell, yeah. square ahead. That's how you tell them apart. J, J-, J- red and J blue. Yeah. Uh, also, Black defeated Andrade. Yes, he did. I don't know what you say about this. Apart from it was, it was good. It was yeah. all right. Uh, da Yeah. Right. Well, <laughs> Black was wrestling twice as hard as usual because his wife was watching. He's to impress her. Okay. And Charlotte there. Flair was there, so you know. <laughs> so Andrade. <I'm drawing. laughs> mm. The Master Champa and Johnny Gargano defeated the Bar. Yes, they did. Uh, Getting a big push to yeah. completely derail everything. How the hell didn't Champa's leg fall off? That's a question. Bless him. Oh, from the power bomb Aye. thing. Someone on Twitter said this is what happens when uh, Champ has to wrestle somebody taller than five foot one. <laughs> Which I thought was very harsh, but I thought it would. I'd say it here and get a laugh. Uh, he, oh. he won the belt from Alistair Black. Come on now. Come on, everyone. Come on, Eileen. Whoa. Yeah. And so it does look like is that Triple H has let two of his best four guys gone. He's the worst manager since Kenny Dalgleish left Beardsley, Clark, <laughs> Ferdinand and Janola. Just, just gone. You he's idiot. Gonna, he's gonna, next week and the next team we're going to see John Dal Thomason and John Barnes <laughs> rock up. <laughs> right. <laughs> Ian Rush. Oh. I'm, I'm, oh. oh, no, it was Keegan, wasn't it? When he got... He had the standoff with the press outside the back of the stadium. You've got to oh. let me manage the team. I can imagine Triple H oh. doing that. Oh, <laughs> that at the team. back of full set. <laughs> we wouldn't have done this deal if we didn't get oh. Keith Gillespie. <laughs> <laughs> Keith Gillespie's NXT <laughs> <laughs> champion. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Just alienate the entire world apart from Newcastle. <laughs> Those three people will be like, yes. <laughs> Cody Rhodes is going to go to Middlesbrough and he's going to get <laughs> something. I would love it. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you. I'll t- uh. <laughs> We're still fighting for this North American title. <laughs> you say that about Chad Gable. <laughs> <laughs> he went down in my estimations. He went down in my estimations then. Gable back in the next team next week. <laughs> oh. oh. Right. Oh, I'm sweating. Sorry. <laughs> oh, God, that got the reaction I wanted. Um, no, some people are going to really enjoy that, though, I think. Yeah. And oh. we're never going to meet any of them. <laughs> Can you so imagine Keith Gillespie in NXT, though? That'd be fantastic. He was a notorious fighter. Him and Shearer having a struggle. Him, him and uh, Duncan Disordley, aye. Duncan Disordley. <laughs> <laughs> Mandy, Mandy Rose defeated Asuka. And match has nothing to do with Kevin Keegan, so who cares? Oh, God. Oh, and what a, it's good that she gave her a brutal series of moves and pile drivers before she pinned her. No, she just dunked her on the ropes. Yeah. Dunked are like two burglars in a certain ex football <laughs> United <laughs> footballer's house. I saw I saw the recap before I saw this. So I assumed uh. that she rolled her up from the distraction from Lacey Evans. Right. But no, they had a bit of a the match just carried on and she just beat her. Yeah. I don't even think it was that cheap a finish. She used the environment to her advantage. Well like Jackie Chan. <laughs> I, uh, she ran up the turnbuckle like Oh, you wait the people made it sound like she gave her the finger poke of doom <laughs> on a Twitter, but I uh Mandy Rose getting the push. Mandy Rose shouldn't be beating Asuka, come on. Yeah. Well, I mean, Mandy Rose is the only one with a feud right now, so she's got to take on Naomi at WrestleMania. Yeah. yeah. I, I well, she can't wrestle at that fast lane because the Usos aren't allowed there. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, but does it like the build towards Asuka versus Lacey Evans at WrestleMania? That's what, okay. I, that's what I took from that Walk segment. Like a leader, treat like a leader. Eh. Robin Williams eh. and Mrs. Doubtfire. Eh. Uh, Ricochet defeated Eric Young in a match that made me go, oh my God, I forgot Eric Young was on SmackDown. One hell of a sell he did through the ropes. Unbelievable scenes. Yeah. Don't know what, how, how, why or how he did, how he just, how he, how did he do it? How did how did how did I like Eric Young? I like Eric Young. I think he was working very hard here as he felt the ring. You can almost say, "Go, Cody, Co- Cody." <laughs> he's always given his all in everything he's done throughout his career. Here's the thing: How does yeah. his boots stay on? Doesn't have them tied up at all. They're just on. Oh. I've not noticed that. Yeah, do you reckon he's got a little sort of lace on the inside that ties it around the around the ankle. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, Pritt stick. Trying to work it out for a long while, I couldn't do it. Oh. So you see, speaking of shoes, you see the clip from Attack Pro where. I can't remember the name, I'm not going to say it. Um, the springboard drop kick, and the guy fell, landed like that, and both his shoes went up and <laughs> hit the lights. <laughs> like, if, they would, if they were aiming, they would never would have hit it. One of the best things is when Undertaker choke slams Terry Funk out of his shoes. <laughs> <laughs> the hell is that? <laughs> Such a Re- serious match. <laughs> uh, Kofi Kingston, AJ Styles, and Jeff Hardy defeated the new Daniel Bryan, Randy Orton, Samoa Joe. And Stupid! It was. Do you see it? He got no, because it wasn't my first one. The version I watched, I didn't know what people were talking about. Oh. It was when I was during the advert bit, so I missed he nails it. Nails a little bit while he jumps and close line. Yeah, and he just goes. Around, doesn't shout at Randy. He might, he might do it once, I think, but he no, just he goes goes around the ring. Stupid. Does stupid. Big E shouts at Randy from the outside. <laughs> yeah. though. He just leaves. The, stupid. And I, I thought that was a nice throwback until I looked and goes, Jesus Christ, that was nine years ago. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And Randy's only just grown his hair back. <laughs> so so that was a nice tribute there. And again, Kofi Mania running wild. And then Shane McMahon went, okay, cool, Kofi. We were worried that he was going to say. Like, Yay! Like, a fast lane. No! Yeah. But we'll Might see. Might just be me worried that Shane was going to go facing Daniel Bryan at fast lane. <laughs> me! <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fantastic. I think Kofi's got a better chance of winning at fast lane than at Mania. I don't think he'll win, but I hope he does. Hmm. Like I, just can't, hmm. I just can't picture him on the WrestleMania WWE title match. Can't do oh, it. I can't. Don't know what's wrong with us. I'm a believer, but just not that much of a believer. Okay. And uh, did you see NXT UK? No, no, not this week. I'm no, I saw the, the yellow one. That's fine. Yeah. It was just more of the never-ending videos, tape. Oh, Christ. More <laughs> of the never-ending uh, filmings from the When Worlds Collide. So. Uh, but yes. uh, Leah Ripley. Leah Ripley. Rhea. 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 I've just forgotten how to talk. <laughs> James Ripley. Rhea. The talented Rhea Ripley. <laughs> Christ, uh, was on there, and that deserves mention because I'm not really into that type of thing usually, but I would let her kill me. Okay. Um, <laughs> Jesus. Mammy is that, that sort of thing. Yeah, it's. Choke me, mammy. There we go. Is that what we're getting at here? Yeah, get, get it's been your, a while. Get, get your stuff in. It's been a while. Yeah. That doesn't really work the same, is it? Like, no. choke me, daddy. It's like, aye, but choke me, mammy's are like, like. Tuck me in bed and make me a cup of tea, mummy. Isn't that? What's going on? <laughs> no. I thought we were going to talk about NXT. <laughs> Walk like a lady. Um, NXT. Uh, Don't treat me like a woman. Okay, Karen. Ooh, Maya Yim. Yeah. Was right. on there making a debut. Not that debut, you idiot. What a catchy a tune uh, Jaya Lee's got for an entrance theme. Mm. Dun, 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 dun. Just a theory, series of bash noises. No. Not too good. She does Wah! with a fan. Mmm. That wasn't racist. No, I no, it wasn't. No, the show it derails. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't. The bit about Ireland was, but that wasn't. She, uh, she does that with a fan and it makes a noise at the same time. It looks, <laughs> it looks, it looks waxer, mm. as we would say right. here in Newcastle. Right. Proper gas. And I love that. Everyone in Ireland was saying that every five minutes. Uh, proper yeah. gas. Proper gas. Like, <laughs> it's good. Oh, you from, from England, like boss? Does it say boss? No. Not really. Okay. Proper gas. Sleep. Yeah. There's a southern player, Stephen Elliott, whose his nickname was Sleeves, because he used to say Sleeves Up to mean, like, swear down. Sleeves Up? What does that mean? I've not heard that. He's That's Irish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, moving on. Yeah. Uh, so, 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 it, I actually made him do well, because she would be nice to me online when oh. it was when she was in the Indies, then she was on Impact, then she said, oh, great, good news for her. And, yeah, we talked about NXT later, early before, but... Yeah, the Obedient Dream is the new North American champion. Interesting little bit, though, because at the end of the actual tapings, Gargano steals the belt back, but that wasn't in the episode. Which oh. is a big, big, crucial... What, you mean something happened and they changed the video before it went out? You know, like when Defiant did the promo about Ilya Dragunov, Wait, and went, they Ilya Dragunov's going to come! And then they end the show with, sadly, not Ilya Dragunov was not going to come. You're like, well, why'd you freaking leave that in the video, then? 
Just saying. Just saying. Also, unrelated, they're going to be running Sunderland soon. Good for them. Because Progress is <laughs> running Newcastle. Are you implying that Sunderland's worse than Newcastle as a city? Yeah, it is. Implying? Yeah, no, no. Right, un- right. <laughs> No, it's, it's a, it's a, I'd it's wager a, there's no place like Sunderland ever. You've anywhere. got a strange affinity yeah. for Sunderland because you went to uni. There I love, and... I love it. Me, it's do you? Like, I, I don't like the way that everyone who lives there is stuck in the 1970s <laughs> in everything that they do. I mean, most, <laughs> most of the shops are from the 70s as well. But Good, like, we'll get our references. But like, you go out on a night out, and it's like 50 pence a trip and stuff like that. With a oh, okay. Code, and that's what, that's what I'm about. I've got to go to Venom one time. And the people there. Just to, they're a different breed. Like rats' tails are still oh, a thing God. in Sunderland. Like quite a lot. Oh. I love I love Sunderland. I, I find it quite scary. I used to work in Sunderland. Uh, Where do you work? I used to work in the Debenhams, in the bridges, in the kitchen. Oof. And then it hit in the head office of Hayes Travel. Nobody offers you more. Ooh-hoo. What culture offered me marginally more? So when there, <laughs> <laughs> um, um, everyone who's left that job said, so. <laughs> uh, uh, the jingle gives me still gives me like Absolutely. Vietnam. Yeah. Um, uh, Velveteen Dream won the North American title. Who cares about that? We're going to talk about Debenhams. Mm. Um, that's why it's weird. Like, you used to work at HMV, so it's, uh, it's like, uh oh, HMV possibly closing. Lots of closing, but the Newcastle won't stay in there. It's like, yeah. Yeah, it's surviving, isn't it? Um, yes. I'm trying to think of other wrestling. A New Japan wrestler retired today. I watched it at my desk oh. uh, at the time of recording. Don't get the name wrong. Don't get the name wrong. Izuka. Izuka. The Suzuki Gun Blow. The pro- <laughs> you know the, the Japanese primate? Oh, God. Basically. No, I know what you mean, but it's just like, no, like you, you better get this right. Gatekeeping exists for a reason. I didn't know this, but apparently he wasn't, before he was all doing his whole animal gimmick where he'd come out in the crowd and scare people and go, ah, like go down the ring and bite people and that. Before he was doing that, he was in a tag team with Tenzan, right? And in this last match, it was a six man, him and two other members of Suzuki Gun against Tenzan, Yano and Okada, right? And Tenzan throughout the match is going like, Wake up, like remember, it's me like trying to like bring him back from Aww, like right. like Guile and Blanca in the street. I was about to say, yeah. <laughs> and he's going like, No, wake up. It's me, your friend. He pins him in the end, he puts their old tag team shirt over him, hits a moonsault on the shirt and pins him. And then and it was a scary moonsault because Tenzan's legs have gone. And um mm. and then after the match, you know, it's just them in the ring alone and he's like, Remember me and all this sort of stuff and he goes, Do they do the big wrestler handshake and the crowd are loving it and they just bites him again? It was all the f- <laughs> <laughs> it, broke, it broke my heart. <laughs> that sounds it, great, actually. And then, uh, it, no, it broke my heart. I was like, oh. he's going to turn face again before he retires, but he didn't. Never mind. Great. That was good. That was good, though. Good time. Whatever his name is, I like him. Isaka. Bless I- you. Isaka. <laughs> and uh, Giant Baba at the Memorial Show, mm-hmm. plus the Abdullah Butcher retirement show. See how well that shows. Uh, that sticks. Uh, and again, Anita was there. He will never, ever, ever retire. Retired last year for the 15th time, and he's already doing this. They gave a guy a, a pile driver through a table on the table leg section of it, so he just went, eh. So that's all my Japanese news. I also just want to point out as well, the match that you sadly missed at OTT sounded incredible. Not to rub it in, because Bastard. if you haven't watched it already, check out OTT's video recap of the feud between David Starr and Jordan Devlin, because oh, it's amazing. Absolutely. Star, such a good heel. The whole story is that they were well, best friends. He's... No, let me... Go right. on, sorry, sorry. They were yeah. best friends, and then the whole thing in multiple promotions, because Star can't be Walder, because he just can't. Devlin's about to be Walder in a match, and Star, his best mate, pulls him out of the ring because he can't bear to see his best friend beat which is a great story. That's really yeah. good. Because the best heels are the ones where you can sort of understand. Yeah, and also, just to interrupt, Bar- Basil Lads uh, on Twitter's best ever tweet was when he sh- apparently shouted, uh, David Star, we'll count to a million before you beat Walder. <laughs> so... <laughs> So um, so then Star comes out for his entrance with their old tag team music, which was We Belong to the Night by Pat Benatar, <laughs> wearing the tag team's T-shirt, removes a towel or whatever, his trunks, his tights have got the Irish flag on them <laughs> and, <laughs> and the Gaelic word for loyalty across them as well. <laughs> That's probably good crap housery, that. I really enjoy that from David. Yeah, and the crowd... The crowd love Devlin, like yeah. like we love Pac. Yeah, it's that, isn't it? Yeah. Like, he's one of our own. He's one, he's of, one of our own. own. <sighs> that Jordan yeah. Devlin. And it was it was weird going to DD and seeing all these people that I've only basically seen on Twitter, to be honest with you, like Scotty Davis and More Than Hype. Oh, so I saw Scotty thought, Davis at North the other week. What you oh, about? I was going to say, right, but, yes, but yes. But like, and I loved all of them until it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, you find out how old they are and they hate them. No, they're like 19. Oh, when you find out when they look at Tyler... Bait as a veteran, you're like, oh, <laughs> Jesus. We went a title, and there was a tag match featuring four children. 
Oh, uh, I forget the other guy. Joe Nelson's one of them, and then uh, uh, someone Bandicoot, Jack Bandicoot. Jake oh, Jack Bandicoot. Bandicoot. No, but Jack Bandicoot's not a kid. Jake Bandicoot, Jack Bandicoot. He's, he's small, but he's like huge. Yeah, if that makes sense. Natalie Sykes was in he's a tardis. One of the OG What Culture fans. She's now a wrestler. Fair play. Is and that right? Good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's the one cool. who did the Fortnite dance. Yeah. Oh, could be any of them. <laughs> the one who came out of the pop punk song again could have been no, any but it's not a pop punk. It's friggin' 1999, which is like a parody, but not really a parody of Guy. 19. No, she came out of the Breakfast Club. Yeah. So, don't you forget about me. Do anyway. I think we're just whiffling at this so point. Unless there's any other wrestling that happened this week that we haven't mentioned, apart from North Wrestling, obviously having an amazing show that will be on the northwrestling.pivotshare.com. Oh. No? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <Don't>. <laughs> Kenny McIntosh. We'll Jerry, <laughs> Jeremy Borash was on NXT. Oh, yes, he was. Can he just go away? Oh, you know like Borash? We've had heat before, and I doubt he remembers. Oh, you said you said about like this. Oh. I can explain. Down for it in, in five minutes. Oh, it'll take a minute. Okay. Obviously, I didn't like the final deletion when it first happened, but like all good people in the biz, we turned it into a storyline. Matt Hardy. Mm, I remember that. So, Kenny McIntosh threw me under the bus. He's on tour with Golda soon, by the way, but he threw me under the bus because he tweeted, Ajay the Jobber doesn't like the final deletion. Dave Meltzer does. Which opinion am I going to listen to? What a knobby thing to tweet that, honestly. <laughs> And then Borash... And you're like, the joke's on you, because like, you get all your opinions from Melter anyway. No, I don't. Borash jumps <laughs> in, even though he's not tagged or anything, but he was the one of the creative minds behind the final Of course he was. Jumps in and goes, well, I've only heard of one of them, so... <laughs> and I should have replied in hindsight, oh, you've not heard of Melter, he's this guy, blah, blah, blah. Instead, I got proper, ah, ah. I got proper wound up. I was proper, that would have been a great reply, know, by the way. But I was oh. proper insecure about it, and I was like, oh, you're, you look like... You're on the Jersey Shore reunion show 60 years later. I know. Oof. Oh, hi. And then he got signed by the WWE. Because <laughs> I thought, oh, I'm... I meant that in a good way. <laughs> I thought wrestlers do love dunking on people when they get a chance. And it's yeah. not very often. Because a lot of them are crap at Twitter. <sighs> well. So when they get the shot, they take it. Yeah, well, Borash. I like um, Jamie Borash. He's, he's, he's done nothing well. but nice things for me. Shut up. He's done out for me. <laughs> You're on neutral, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> like Switzerland. <laughs> Let's have a rummage in our mail bags. <laughs> ah, now it's time for the. Oh, the freaking mic has changed, you're right. Let's give that little tug in. There you go. Thank you for giving us a tug. No problem, anytime. It's a new burp. Bit of relief, bit of uh, abducted in plain sight there. <laughs> I haven't seen that yet, but what's a Ted Bundy? Bloody taste? hell. Oh, oh crap. It's mental. Abducted and I had to watch it twice just to confirm I saw what I saw the first time. There's more to that than meets the eye. Unbelievable. There it is. Their parents are nice. They're awful. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're terrible. Awesome. Let, a, let, a, let a dirty 40 year old man sleep. Oh, sorry, just listen to his therapy tips next to your sleeping 12 year old daughter. And then yeah, they were surprised when he kid. kidnapped her. Yeah. Probably. Having sexual relations with this man while he's sleep there. When does this happen? Like what year? Or 70, like 76, 74. People were stupid back then. Yeah. Well, they lived in like, I think they're Mormons or something. They are lived, they? Oh. Or something. They lived in like a proper Christian community. They were like, we never lock our doors. Everything's fine. Except when there's a pedophile in the neighborhood. Yeah. It made me angry that documentary. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Damn you, Bob. Time I'm, for the mailbag. Oh, yeah. B, uh, B, B. B's out. But I'm, I'm Bob as well because he was I'm thick. Bob, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so and our time for everyone's favourite part of the show the mailbag and again don't forget to see these before they're submitted in writing so number one hello lads let's have a call back to a segment in the early days of this podcast would you rather oh yeah we got rid of that it was crap <laughs> so if you can only choose one thing happen in this Wrestlemania would you rather have Kofi win the WWE title or Becky win the women's title regards Garan from Malaysia I do apologise for Malaysia. Truly Asia. Wow. Go on, Ross, how they talk in Malaysia? No! <laughs> I was just singing that the little advert, Diddy. Malaysia, truly Asia. I used to live with a girl from Malaysia in first year. She, she was weird. Not because she was Malaysian, she was just weird. Continue. We make Jeremy Clarkson look like open minded <laughs> on this show, I swear to God. Anyway, uh, that's a good question. If you have to pick one, Becky go. to win the women's championship. So I'm all right with Daniel Bryan holding the other one forevermore. I'm going to say Becky win the women's title if that match is headlining. Because if it's if they're done, they do anything else. Nah. It must be headlining. Yeah. There's no way Kofi is. Uh, bless him. So I'm okay with that because then they can do a possible rematch. But she has to win it because it's WrestleMania. And that's all I have to say. I agree. 
I think that I'd be fine with Kofi winning it at Fastlane, or I'd be fine with him winning it somewhere further down the line. But right now, uh, the Becky thing... I think everyone's... everyone's oh, oh, I'm going to sound like Brian. Everyone's really fickle, aren't they? And I think that the Kofi storyline... They've just chanced upon two white-hot storylines at the same time. And the Kofi one's been distracting from the Becky one recently, but the Becky one's the bigger... Mm. Well, I mean, as experience tells us, like, look at Tyne Dillinger, they'll definitely, you know, keep the momentum going with Kofi, not just let him, you know, oh. dwindle out. Number two, hello, beautiful boys. I just want to say that you guys were the reason I got back into wrestling during your name-redacted days, and I think, thank you so much for that. Oh, God. My question is, if you were a wrestler, what would your gear be like? I would personally go with singles run shirt Harper. What? Vest. Fun fact, me and Harper are from the same city and his birthday is one day after mine. Only day-wise, not year-wise. Well, thank you for all the details, <laughs> pal. I mean, what's your blood type? And KO's shorts and boots. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Nutcracker Samir from Rochester, New York. I suspect that might be his wrestling name. <laughs> He's just getting a cheeky plug on the podcast. Samir In which case, hey, well done. Samir sounds a bit indie doesn't he? A vest and basketball shorts. So. Yeah, I mean, Owens gets away with it because he's the one guy doing it if... If you want to see that, yeah, it'd be great if you look a little armory. Anyway, I'm, I look, I sound like a grizzled veteran. Um, what would you wear, Ross? I would go for the Viscera bin bag. <laughs> many, many look, reasons, right? but chiefly, I don't know why Viscera never did this. Why did he just trap the opponent inside the bin bag, suffocate them, <laughs> and then pin them? That's what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> right, Terry Funk choking Flair with a carrier bag. Just... <laughs> Okay, Jack. <laughs> um, assuming I had a wrestler's body. Oh, I mean, obviously, yeah. I'd go. F- I'm a big fan of the um, long tights, like old oh. Jericho style long tights. Bit ornate, bit decorative, but basically long tights. Be- definitely prefer them to the the trunks for me personally. Um, that's pretty much, and I like a classic, like a good wrestling boot, black wrestling boot, high up the leg. Oh, there you go. That's fine. That's a very nice answer. Thank you. Jim. I'll probably wear, wear one of those onesie things like Tigger from Winnie the Pooh where my head's here and but like <laughs> sticking out the neck um, just to make people think I'm taller than I am. And then attack the head and you wouldn't feel it. <laughs> yeah, he's there punching out. I'm like, ah! Because <coughs> you can't see this because that, that's not there. Wait, but... you're going to be dragon dragon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. Mafu, mafu. <laughs> It's a onesie. Mafu, of... Mafu. Oh, it's a huge Mafu. It's a onesie of you. No, no, it's I'm not... It's Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What would you what would you wear? Chris Helmsworth. Uh yes, and that would win every match. Number three. Hey gang. With the rumors of the proposed invasion angle, the WWE offered the young books circling this week. What well, uh sorry, the side back, I've not read any of these. Was that real? Apparently they offered them a three-year deal on similar money to AJ Styles with being the elite going on the WWE Network. And it'll be an invasion thing then. And it'll oh, be right, an invasion. So do okay, fair enough. And possibly by extension, the elite. I started to think about the pop that would have and if it would be at all possible to happen sometime down the line anyways. Oof. I could be wrong, but it feels the WWE are slowly becoming more receptive to other wrestling promotions, at least when compared to, say, the Monday Night Wars. Of course, that was fueled by extremely competitive TV ratings, but there seems to be a little more goodwill between promotions now, uh, the ones that they own or taking all the top talent to, obviously. <laughs> I was wondering if you think it's possible that AEW and WWE could have a mutual understanding as things progress. Could an invasion angle be worked out somewhere down the line? Is it possible it could be booked with both sides coming out for the better? Just for a bit of fun, who would you have who feud with? What? God almighty. Um, the Young Bucks versus The Usos? Kenny Omega versus Seth Rollins. Chris Jericho is a swarmy heel playing both sides. Obviously, it is unlikely, as AEW seem all about sticking it to the muck man, but a fun bit of fantasy booking. Love the work you do. Patrick, P.S., apropos of nothing, Mr. Kennedy was awesome. Thanks. Well, I like the bit at the very Wait. end. Yes, I agree. Mr. Kennedy Wait. was great. Scroll the people to say otherwise. Thank you for right in, Patrick, but I'm confused by his question. Which one? There was 19. I know. I... Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> I think the main question, the question marks is... I'm, I'm running out of steam here on this podcast. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, could WWE and AEW work together? I think that's the, the gist of it. Oh, I thought the main question no. was which feud would you book? Fantasy well, there's a bunch of them. I was wondering if you think it was possible. 
Uh, yeah, possible. Right now, absolutely not. The whole point of AEW then, is it's competing against the McMahon, so no. But then Patrick starts... Patrick, you start, you say that, and then you go, well, obviously that's unrealistic, though. He answers his own question, and then <laughs> he takes three of the best examples for himself. <laughs> he goes, oh, Omega versus Rollins, maybe? Well, yeah, I would have gone for that, yeah. Patrick. Conversion angle be worked out somewhere. Only if AEW is on its ass and needs money. So that's not going to be happening for a while. So I agree. Possibly in 2020, 20. 2020, 2020. Christ. 2020. Uh. Can I have some fumes, please? <laughs> um, yeah, we could see that, but right now, nah. So, you know, who would you have as a dream match, if you can think of any? The Revival versus the Bucks is the obvious one, but um, uh, Omega versus... Um, oh, God, it's all been done before. Yeah, it I would have Jordy before. Nev against Shane McMahon. Oh, Man, similar, I'll go with Shane McMahon versus Cody Rhodes in a My Dad's Richer Than Your Dad. <laughs> <laughs> My dad can have your dad. Um, and then the winner gets the road surname. <laughs> the road surname on a pole match. And then, ah, I won it for AEW. My man's like, ah, I just bought AEW. Cody. <laughs> now, that'd be a good swerve, I think. Um, Omega versus Gargano. There you go. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Second. Nothing that, more to say, really. It's just like. me running out of steam. Absolutely. Um, the air is thick in this oh, room. I mean, I would usually wear my sexy Home Alone uh, hoodie, but it's... Sorry, not the Home Alone 3 hoodie. I'll be next week. But yeah, it is <laughs> sweltering in Home here. Home Alone 3 is really good. It is really good. Yeah. There's, not a, again, there's not again. a parrot that sings no. badly Roy Brown in the shower. I'm very happy for you. Please send any questions to... Mailbag at cultaholic.com. Thanks for giving me the Stephanie McMahon thing when Triple H came out. Oh, I was supposed to be the Scott Hall. <laughs> yeah. It's Cultaholics. The question. And a big question on everyone's lips this week is, will Kofi Kingston win the WWE title? A fast lane. Um... So no. is, is the question, will he win it or will he win it a fast lane? I think it's a multi... Will he thing. win it? Like that last one Try we just had from... Um, Friggin' Patrick, it's a multi one. Uh, do you think Friggin' Patrick? Friggin' Patrick. That's it. Well, his first name wasn't on there, so I just gave him one. That's an Irish name as well. Um, we just can't leave them alone. Friggin' Patrick. That's what his mum calls him. He's late for lunch. Anyway, uh, will he win it a fast Thanks lane? Thanks for writing in Patrick, by the way, mate. I feel bad about ripping Patrick now. I don't. Um, yeah, will he win it a fast lane? No. Okay, great. And will he win it at WrestleMania? No. SummerSlam. Oh, oh, no. The biggest event of the summer. New Day will be dressed in tuxes. It'll be fantastic. Boy, it'll be hotter than us. Yeah, but it's the biggest event of the summer. I don't think because Brian has anything going on right now, per se. I mean, the Styles feud's done. He's just been gifted this... Oh, just keep what, 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 what do you want? Him in the down. toilet, what? Pacini and Ross have pointed out something to me today. What? Look at Kevin Owens' new gimmick. What is it? He loves his kid and he loves eating. What does he love eating? Is it vegan food? It's bloody big dirty pizzas and big dirty uh, drinks and big dirty popcorn. And he loves doing things like bowling, going to the cinema, consumerism. He's everything that Daniel Bryan hates. Yeah, but that could be any wrestler. It's Kevin Owens. <sighs> no, but Kevin Owens' new gimmick is Dad, who occasionally wrestles. It's a mid-90s gimmick from the cartoony days. He likes Luger. Chilling with his family, like, oh, I'm here with my family who love me. And they're like, arm distance away. <laughs> Arms tight behind their backs. Yeah. yeah. Or, Isn't that right? Say it, say it, say Orton it. and his Akra's wife. <laughs> Don't get the door. <laughs> <laughs> There's like over a bunch of people in his house. Like, who are they? <laughs> <laughs> Got the camera. Crew. They were shooting an interview with him. <laughs> Triple H. Bang. It was so funny. Ah. It was so oh, no, because he had it in the scream twice, didn't they? It's the exact same. So I was like, dunk, dunk. Ah. Like, oh, I forgot about that. When he throws him through the front windows. <laughs> that was so good until that happened. No, it wasn't anyway, no, so... oh, it was Oh, no, no, sorry. I meant the, the feud because Orton, Orton kicks Vince. Mm, and kisses then he, Stephanie. Yeah, kisses Stephanie. He's about to kick Steph and then Trevor runs. I was like, oh, this is going to be awesome. And it's, Which is why I don't want to bring it back. Uh, Kofi Kingston to win it at SummerSlam because by oh. that point I'll be sick of it and God, that's forever but I think away. if he loses a couple of more matches the people will be gagging it's the old Daniel Bryan 2014 but, no, but SummerSlam ages and ages away maybe a backlash but friggin SummerSlam Man, they did this bang. with Roman about Brock and it wasn't a success at all so no, don't, don't, don't leave it three years Money in the Bank Just leave it six months or so 
He could win money in the bank. He could go away, have a crisis, dye his hair red. <laughs> Many things could happen. Come out with balloons. Yeah. Okada. Oh, right. Ross made an Okada reference. He didn't get it. Yeah, wow. But yeah. No, you're on your fire. <laughs> Anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Good night. <laughs> but yeah, no, I see him winning against Brian Rainey because there's nothing else happening. Or if he doesn't, he will eventually maybe a backlash because then they can extend it and have something to keep on going. If they blow off the other feuds, which are hopefully Rollins beating Lesnar and then Becky beating everybody. Mm. I would love to see him win it. I would love it if he won. That I would bat. love it. But. Keith Gillespie to win at WrestleMania. <laughs> it's an odd, it's an odd state of affairs where it's not the sort of one where I'd be like devastated if he didn't because it's Brian and it's hard to hate Brian as champion. Oh, I love him right now. Yeah, but I do agree with Ross now that he said that. I think he'll win it later because yeah. if if and people have disagreed with me on Twitter about this, but if if Kofi, Becky, and Seth all win at WrestleMania, it's too much. It's going to take right, away from I mean. each other. That's what I think anyway. And somebody's been mm. going, no, it won't. But I think it actually will. We'll watch it anyway, you know, won't we? You can't... Yes. We, who, who was I talking to this about? It was in the pub, wasn't it? How many wanks you can have oh, in yeah, such it was, a short uh, space oh, of it time. Was, it sounds like a Pachiti conversation, but I think it might have been Richard Tubman. I know? think it might have been that dark horse in the back Richard, corner there. Yeah. We were saying, like, how many times in the day could you potentially ejaculate? <laughs> it's it, like one day from, like, when you wake up to when yeah. you're going to bed. We have the best... Friday nights after the Cold Alex office. What, what's your record? Because potentially, I don't want to share that. No. Oh, okay. Twenty-seven. No. Um, but <laughs> mine's in the double digits. In re- oh, is it? Oh, that one. Oh, oh, by the end, I'm like pulling rope. But, oh, oh, Jesus Christ! I would have thought like four max, how maybe five. This, um, four max. How does this link back to? <laughs> but like WrestleMania, if if Becky and Kofi and Rollins all win, there's three ejaculations. By there. the end, it's dust. Yeah. By the end, you're asleep. <laughs> you can't look at your Which fans. we will be at this freaking <laughs> WrestleMania like last year. God. And on a final note, I tell you what was fun, just to talk about, again, Newcastle United and stuff, but God, there's big old posters and billboards of Shea Given in Ireland. Is and that? I, was stop, I stopped talking with mate. It was like, mate on the tram talking about stuff. Yeah, yeah, and this happened and this happened. I was just like, that Shea Given? He goes, like, huge thing. It's like, yeah, he's a hero over here. I'm like, oh, mate. Whoa. He's a hero to Newcastle. I was going to say, though, it's the two things related. It's like, oh, yeah, of course he is. Huh? Holy, it's been 10 years since he left. Oh, Holy that was it. That's, what, that's when I went from being, you know, loving Newcastle to just like liking them when he get when he left. I'm like, oh. I just had a memory there. Did you? My mate in, like, school, not James, but my mate in, like, <laughs> primary school, once claimed that his mom had kissed Shea Given. Which, in hindsight, sounds like his mum slept with Shea Given. That's what it's. My pal's like. mum wanted to go with uh, Bob Geldof. Bob Geldof? Bob Geldof. When he was part of the Boomtown Rats back in the day. Right, oh, right. no, what a name. <laughs> what? Nothing. No. Okay. Mm. Damn it. Cool. If this is going to famous people <laughs> our parents have slept with, I think it's definitely time to end the show. I would like we... to apologise for the second half of this podcast because I've just run out of steam. I heard. These, these pit view weeks are hard and long. I'd like to apologise <laughs> for absolutely nothing. Oh, <laughs> oh. Have a drink, yeah, backwards. So thank you very much for joining us here at the Cololic Video Podcast. Ross, would you like to plug anything? At Ross on Wrestling. And jump. the biggest Straight to Hell episode since yours Ooh. will that be taking awful. place this weekend. Oh, who's it going to be? I'm Tune not willing to say. To we out. had a cancellation, but we found the biggest replacement oh. ever. Friggin' Undertaker. <laughs> Tickling I, the balls. You would flake out. Tickling the balls. Is that supposed to be a, a, a hint? No, no. Oh. <laughs> I hope not, anyway. Uh, I'm on tour at Jack the Jobber. Uh, don't forget, Inside the Ropes, Kenny's on tour with Goldust. It's going to be magical. March the 5th to the 9th. Check it out. Uh, Mafu Greg, that's M A ha ha double F E W ha ha G R E double G ha ha. I love doing that every time. And this week I will plug. It was nice. Well, nice, weren't they? Uh, Justy Fishhook, who was an OTT wrestler. And that's all I've got to say on that undramatic note. Sweet. Please follow us on, or give us money at patreon.com forward slash cultaholic. And as always, uh, join us. Join us. Join us.